On this episode, I talk about what I do if I started VaynerMedia today. I'll talk about the quality of video. And I struggle with talking about what I don't like about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Vay Nurchuk, and this is episode 120 of the Ask Gary V Show. I'm super excited. Uh, we've just been sitting here pounding the pavement on our thousand plus uh, submissions to join my crew next Friday. Uh, I know that we've been mentioning, Steve rightfully said, hey, we said we were gonna announce the winners today. Please mention that. We were gonna pick the winners. We are gonna contact the winners today. Uh, we will announce the winners on tomorrow's show, episode 121. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. That's the utility part of the show. I have no idea what this baseball crap is, but fine. I think Sid, the intern, why don't you show White Space Sid uh, to, uh, uh, to the Vayner Nation. Uh, I'm excited, I'm feeling good. I feel like I've got a good episode in me. I'm, I'm feeling happy to be back on the East Coast. I love the West Coast. I enjoyed the talk I gave to in LA. I appreciate all of you that came out for that. That was a lot of fun, but I think it is time to get into the episode. Is there anything else I wanna talk about? I don't think so. Nothing really in pop culture that's got me too excited. Anything for you, Steve? I mean, you're not excited about, about Taylor Swift and Nicki Minaj yelling at each other on Twitter? You know, Taylor and Nicki's b- b- beef is intriguing, but not hitting the radar at the highest levels. Sorry, Steve. I never know with you, you know? That's a good point. India, let's get into the show. Not bad, <laughs> not bad. Not bad at all. I wanted to go straight, I almost went straight, but going completely straight gives me a vulnerability of you catching me, so. Uh, let's get into the show. Kyle asks, if you were to start VaynerMedia today without anyone knowing who you were, how would you find talent? Uh, Kyle, first of all, I'm gonna answer the real answer and then the question that I think you're actually answering. The real answer is I would never, and this is gonna give a lot of people a lot of insight, I'm always trying to provide value, Sid. As you go through your career, you want to provide value. So I'm going to answer this twice. Uh, the answer is I would not start VaynerMedia. I, I actually will never in my career start a business or be in a business that I don't have disproportional leverage from the beginning to affect the outcome of the business. So the thought of starting a social media agency uh, where I am not a known entity and I don't have leverage with brands already. VaynerMedia started much like the networking video that said was taught by DRock. Actually, link that up, DRock. Let's give Sid. This is like a Sid episode. It's a Sid explosion, guys. <laughs> Let's have a little ding, ding, ding right here. If you haven't seen it, check out the video. I talked about networking, and somewhere in that theme, I said, "Let it come to you. Have the leverage." When I when I started Vayner, I had the leverage. I was already a known entity in this space at that point, probably for about three or four years, two or three years. Uh, brands were coming to me. I scratched the itch. I reverse engineered. I had a business because it came to me. Uh, talent came to me because I was known as a thought leader already in the space, to start a business without leverage, uh, either having the pure talent, I'm great at cooking, you know, baking, and thus I have a chance. Maybe I don't need to be known for my baking skills, but I have the skill, or I have the disproportional known factor. Now to answer your question, you need to go out and network, <laughs> ironically. If you're somebody who's inspired by me, listen, I see a ton of you 23 year olds starting your social media agency uh, because it feels easy, right? Like I'm a kid, I know what Vine is. You know, <laughs> remember these businesses need business results. So just cause you use Snapchat to hook up or whatever you're doing, right? Just cause you know how to swipe to the right doesn't mean you know how to sell cups of coffee. So I think what's really important is do you have the skills first? Second, you gotta go out and network. If you're starting an agency, if you're asking that question selfishly for yourself to what, what should you do, I think you need to go to meetup.com, go to every social media meetup in your general area, go to five to 15 conferences, big ones around social media. No social media examiner does a big one in San Diego. Like scrounge up the dollars and go. Network, 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 learn, 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 follow people. 
multiple people because they're all bringing different values. Learn, learn, learn. Engage on Twitter. It's the open cocktail party of the internet. Engage with people that are engaging on comments within my Facebook posts. Become parts of communities. Leverage. Remember, jab, 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 right hook. Don't go in there and be like, hey, do you want to work for me? Like, Become part of a community, then leverage the aspects of being part of that community. But it starts, India, with becoming part of the community. Like, I don't want to glaze over that. I appreciate you're nice, but I want to make sure we really get it here. Like, you've got to become part of the community and then you can leverage it. Don't tactically, don't fake the, don't go into the Reddit community and and your first post is a spam, right, Steve? Because then you get flamed to death. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people try to do that and they think they're clever because they're patient for a month and acting like they're part of the, people can sense shit. If your intent was to become part of the community just to extract value out of the community, people can sense it. Tyler asks, in a Snapchat, Instagram world, is video quality more essential than in years past? Content itself more more essential than in years past. No. (laughs) Eat it, (laughs) D-Rock. Best question ever. (laughs) Oh, let me go into it. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like I have, Indy, I feel like I have some depth in this episode. Look, cr- like, cr- at the end of the day, creative is subjective and we all like different things. Plenty of people, 20 years ago, most of our parents, even mine for an old guy, told us that rap wasn't music. Like, can we get over, like, that reality TV wasn't entertainment, right? That YouTube wasn't real stars. I mean, this always happens, guys. So, you know, like plenty of people like content that doesn't have the perfect mic or the perfect, you know, lighting. That being said, you know, a lot of people made comments that my last video, the networking video, was different than the others. Hmm, makes sense. Sid did it instead of D Rock. Like, you know, and they didn't say they liked it better or hated it worse or this was what. It's just different, but it, there doesn't, that doesn't mean that there's one that's right or wrong. Clearly, there is enormous upside to great editing and, and lighting and mics. You know, like clearly, there's value to that. Uh, but there's also, uh, listen, <laughs> Wine Library TV worked. And Steve, I look like a hostage in Iraq. <laughs> All right, India, go ahead. All right. Uh... <laughs> right? I mean, have you seen some of those, Andrew? I know you didn't know who I was when you started here, Dick. <laughs> but did you go look back at some of those? Look like a hostage. We should cut in episode one right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Wine Library TV. I am Gary Vaynerchuk, Director of Operations here at Wine Library at winelibrary.com. God, I love that. I love it. I love it. You know. I'll tell you one thing I like about editing. You can snap and something happens. Twitter. And I have a question for the show. Recently I've heard... Hold on, I want to hear this. Hey Gary, how's it going? Dylan Selberg here, at Dill Cell on Twitter. And I have a Dill question Cell. for the show. Dill Cell. Recently I've heard plenty of social media experts, uh, mainly spurred by Mark Cuban and Evan Spiegel, oh, okay. argue for people. deleting the history of their tweets and, and other past social media posts because they say that the context is, is out of play eight to ten months in the past. I was curious what your thoughts are on this and if you have a counterpunch. Thanks, Gary. Love your show. Thanks, brother. I, I, I don't think I have a counterpunch. I actually agree with both. I, I think, first of all, I do think that Snapchat is the closest thing to real life communication. Like everything you say to your friends doesn't get recorded for life. I, I think that's why Snapchat exploded. When I finally made that realization, I'm like, wait a minute, this is actually the real way we communicate. That's when it started getting exciting to me. That's why I started in late 2013, mid 2013, starting to get really bullish on it. Um, so, you know, I, you know, Cuban with Cyberdust, Evan with Snapchat. I know where you're going, Deal Cell. <laughs> you know, I think that, uh, I think that, uh, I think that it has a place, and I do believe that a disproportionate amount of the content deserves to be in a place where it disappears forever. However, I think. There's enormous value. As a matter of fact, yesterday was one of my favorite moments in a long time in my career. Uh, Somebody tweeted, sweet red wine is starting to explode in the US. I made that prediction on a Wine Library TV episode seven (laughs) years ago. And he linked towards it. It was fun to see a younger, less fit Gary make a tremendous prediction about where the wine market was going. And so I think there's content that I think, is anybody here devastated? about the fact that they have these great pictures or videos or comments from three, four, five, six years ago? No, both. 
The answer is both. But it's not an all or nothing and definitely the Twitters and the Facebooks created this kind of all for ha- forever and I think the reason Snapchat's working, the reason Sna- Cyberdust has value and is working is because they play in the yin to the yang and this and that and so uh, that's that. I think they both work. I think they both have a place at the table um, and I think there's probably, you know, this is why Beam and Meerkat and Periscope live in real time content has a place at the table and there's probably some sort of fourth thing I haven't even thought about yet that has a place at the table. There's a lot of seats at the tables, my friends, and that's where I think people, people get way too all or nothing and they don't realize how many chairs there really are. That's beautiful. Thanks, India. You don't know how many chairs there are. I'm beaming this episode right now. Are you? <laughs> are you? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> This is the guy. Oh, this is incredible. Um, Vincent yes. changing his baby's diaper with an Oscar Z shirt on. Yes. He wants to know. Um, what- Vincent asks, what's the number one characteristic that you'd like to pass down to Misha and Xander? And what's the number one characteristic you hope they don't get from you? Great question. The number one characteristic I want my children to get from me, boy, there's a lot because I think I'm really fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, so if they could be a complete replication, that'd be great. Sorry, Lizzie. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, you know, uh, let's go with first thoughts. I think that uh, the first two thoughts that came to me were, and they, they, this may seem interesting to you, depends on how well you know me. Number one, the first thing that I thought of, it's, it's sad that this was first over the second one, but maybe that's an insight that I need to deal with. First one is uh, competitiveness. I, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it makes me sad because I know it's less noble than a lot. Then the other one is humility, which I know for so many of you, especially if this is like the sixth episode you watch or first, you think it's completely ego, but I'm telling you, like I know how much my humility is the engine of my success, um, and I have plenty of ego. It's me pulling in those opposite directions. But my competitive nature has been a very, very positive impact on my life in a lot of ways. Um, it's just, I associate that with myself. I think my kids, no matter what they do, and I don't mean competitive to like make money, competitive to write the best song of all time, competitive to raise the most money for this disease of all time. I think being competitive is a very, very lucky attribute. And I think that my family, and me specifically, take it too far. It can be very unhealthy at times. It causes friction, um, but I would never give it up. I just wouldn't. I think it's just too damn important. It gets me through so much. It gets me through so much. Um, you know. I, I want them to be kind. I like being kind. I think kind is incredibly uh, important. I think the one thing that I think that, uh, that uh, you know, it's funny, I really do think I'm a paradox. I have yin and yangs to all my own feelings. I'm trying to think about what I don't like about myself. Uh, you know, <laughs> God, I love myself. Um, what, what don't I want them to have? Um, this is how, by the way, you ever want to stump me? Try to have me talk negative about my own self. <laughs> uh, I, I think, look, I think there's a ton of things I do wrong. I, I think that at times um, I wish I was a little more selfish. Um, uh, at times I wish uh, I... Wish I uh... Man, my parents did a really good job. Um, I would say the number one thing that I don't want them to, uh, to take from me is I think that I could have done a much better job in my early years on work-life balance. Uh, the, the only resemblance of a regret I have is the first five to six years of, of my marriage with Lizzie. I think that I left two weeks of real quality together time per year on the table. And those are 12 weeks that I could never get back and that I really wish I had. And luckily I'm way young enough to more than make up for those 12 weeks and so I will and so I think I think that would probably be it. I mean, at the end of the day, I just, as you can tell, my brain as a computer is not very capable of like looking at too many of the negatives. I had a negative question here before, but I deleted it. That I wouldn't know what to say? Yeah. Do it, bring it up. Uh, you have it? it again. Give me the next one while I'm answering that. Right. We'll do it as a bonus podcast only question. This is the Caleb kid. Oh, Caleb, yeah, like this. <laughs> Hey Gary V. Hey. My name is Kayla Maddox. I'm 13 years old. And I just wrote my first book. Keys to Success for Kids. You can get it on Amazon.com. And my question is, if you were in my shoes, what would be the first step to promoting the book? The Ask Gary V. Show. Uh, Caleb, 
The first thing I would do is I would try to find uh, a thought leader with a very big audience that had, let's say, either a blog or a podcast or a show and I would try to make a piece of content that would catch his or his team's attention so that then that person would promote it to that enormously large audience that probably has a lot of kids or younger brother and siblings and you would get a disproportionate organic awareness play that you didn't have to pay for and in essence what you did was you hacked it by making very compelling content. That would probably be what I would do. You found it? Cool. All right, well that's for the bonus podcasting. That's if you download the podcast for your Android or your <laughs> iTunes uh, device. And yes, I know many of you in Facebook and YouTube are about to like leave a complaint like, what the hell, why are you, you always say don't make the customer do things that they don't want to do and now I have to go and download the podcast answers. No fair, I don't like that. Tough sh- <laughs> Can, can we just cut that and make it an Instagram video that says download my podcast <laughs> on iTunes? Good show. I feel good about there's some good there was some good stuff in this episode. Sid, you you really kind of hit the map on on this episode. Um, where Andrew, where is my let's get into the show as, t-shirts? As we speak. Are you your five designs? Close. Yeah. There. Show me a couple. Show me a couple. Actually, yeah, let's actually capture my reaction to them here live. I'm sorry, and listen, what do you, you know, what do you mean, oh God? <laughs> uh huh, uh huh. I see where you're going with this one. I like where you're going with this one. Yeah. Uh huh. Your face is India. <laughs> India, it's not India. all about you. <laughs> Imagine these people that think it's all about them. <laughs> That's so weird. We weren't just talking Question of the day. What's the one trait that you want your kids to get from you? You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. I love that. I love that. I love that. Uh, <laughs> that's just going to be the t shirt. Actually, you know, I'm going to continue the question here. Well, well, Steve, you're an interesting thing. This podcast, you don't have to look as great as you normally do. Um, <laughs> This is interesting to drag you into this podcast form. I think this is an interesting question for you, meaning do you view the word ego less cynically today than you did 24 to 36 months ago by seeing through my eyes how I contextualize that word? Well, that was some good stuff. That, you know what? That felt like native pod. By the way, that was the first time in the history of podcast native content that I felt I was doing a radio show versus for video. I think we might have been, you know, I have a funny feeling we're about to get a lot of social comments of like, hey, wait a minute, can you just do a after the show podcast? Because that felt like a podcast. Spin off. 